Ashwini Agarwal now. He's founder and partner at Demeter Advisors. Ashwini, always a pleasure having you with us here on CNBC TV 18. Thank you for your time. Um, you know, the uh, market's uh, continuing to rally on, Ashwini. And let's just start with power as a space. And, and, and what, what would you advise viewers to buy? Uh, because, uh, you know, the fundamentals are, are there. <clears throat> you know, when we, when we approach a sector like power, which was down in the dumps, I mean... Uh, it takes a lot longer for people at large to get convinced, right? Well, this is this is the real deal. Uh, but we had the Bernstein analyst with us yesterday who was talking to us about how there is a real need to add twice the capacity over the next couple of years than what was added over the last few years. Uh, and a lot of the ordering will take place with Indian companies here. A lot of the financing will be met by Indian companies. Uh, just your thoughts here, Ashwini. Morning, Prashant. Thank you for having me here. Uh, so you rightly pointed out that, you know, this is a sector which was down in the dumps and it's taken a while for people uh, to, to kind of realize that there is a real opportunity out here. And I think what many of us uh, miss is the fact that uh, the amount of time we all spend on social media or looking at uh, our uh, Instagram pages or Facebook, you know, whatever else you're doing, YouTube uh, videos and so on and so forth, and uh, the, the, these engines, they're trying to curate uh, the content for you using artificial engine, um, uh, artificial intelligence engines that in the background. They, all of this consumes a whole bunch of power. Um, and the data centers uh, in, uh, in, the, in the United States already account for, I'm told, about 8% of the power consumed in the United States. And I would imagine that it would be no different uh, from uh, what happened, what will happen in India, or what's probably already happening in India. So, obviously, the the demand for electricity is growing at a very rapid clip in India. In addition to connectivity uh, that has been brought about by the government and uh, uh, demands for air conditioning, home appliances, and uh, what have you. So yes, it's a it's a it's a situation we all missed it, or, or at least I can say I missed it. Uh, three years ago, four years ago, uh, to to look at this broad trend. So and and your question is, what does one do now? Um, I think you know maybe some of the large utilities is uh, is is a way where valuations still appear to be okay, but in a lot of the distribution space or distribution infrastructure, machine manufacturers. Uh, in my view, are now trading at multiples, which are kind of uh, very demanding in my perspective. Uh, so I think, you know, yeah, I'm looking at the past thing. I missed it, uh, but I'm not likely uh, to, to do anything about them at this point uh, because valuations are quite punchy. Yes, there'll be earnings growth, but we must remember that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, when you are paying a very high multiple, you're paying for multiple years of cash flow and you're paying a fancy exit a multiple as well uh, beyond your visible horizon of three years or five years. And these are cyclical uh, asset creators. So, you know, you might have a very good run for three or four years. And after that, what uh, the question will arise again. So, yeah, I mean, momentum is there uh, with good reason, but I'm not the one to participate here. Okay. <clears throat> uh, you know, I, I guess it takes a brave heart to say that in this market, Ashwini. Great to be speaking with you. Uh, because it's, it's a complete out and out, good morning, it's an out and out momentum market, right? And that's what we've had for several months, in fact, over a year now. So, okay, uh, maybe you're not going to ride this power wave or, you know, some of these high flyers, but then what else? Where else would you? Because the thing with this market is that wherever there is relative value, those pockets have been testing investors' patience. You know, whether it is, uh, let's say, FMCG stocks or even banks uh, up till recently. So what are you looking at? So, Survi, great question. And, you know, let's go back to, you know, the two big bull markets in our, in my lifetime, at least, which is 2000, 2008, and partly, let's say, 2017. Okay. Now, in 2020, uh, 2000 rally, if you had purchased, you know, any of the industrials or any of the banks, even as the IT stocks were having a roaring bull run, you would have come out way ahead uh, on a three-year basis or a five-year basis, okay? If you look at the returns between even 99 to 2004, forget 2000 to 2004, you would have come out ahead if you had bet against the crowd. Similarly, in 2007, which is a year before the market peaked, if you had bought pharmaceuticals and consumer names, you would have come out way ahead on a three to five-year basis. 
what i'm trying to say and it's in a very uh, it's, it's how at least i think that it's very important uh, to kind of let go of what is trendy and what has momentum and look for value and value lies in cash flows and value lies in relative uh, valuations uh, so this is the time to actually be buying large caps uh, you know like you mentioned several of the banks have barely done anything a lot of the insurance companies have barely done anything and these valuations are reasonable i mean they are not expensive these are market leaders generating a ton of cash um, so you know why why not buy buy these companies uh there is bottom up opportunity in several industrial areas in consumer stocks on a bottom up basis which look good pharmaceutical healthcare looks good so all i'm saying is that look you know when the market is in such a frenzy you got to do two things one is look for out of favor large caps market leaders and number two is dig deeper but be very careful where valuations on a historical basis are trading at significantly above long term median historical numbers that's that's what i would say all right ashwini good morning good to see you uh, morning, in, uh, uh you know that's an interesting point uh, you make what about the other large cap uh, part of the index that is the it space Suddenly, yeah. you're getting these sound bites that maybe quarter one is going to be the quarter from where we see an uptrend. There's plenty of interest, and the stocks are not trading particularly cheap. If I get the number correct, you know the IT index itself, all the stocks out there, they're trading at around 28 times, which is a yeah. 20% premium in comparison to what they've traded on, say, for the last five years or so. And it's at a big premium in comparison to what the Nifty is trading at as well. But your view yeah. on the tech space, there seems to be plenty of interest out there, and the street is bracing for positive surprises. so uh, nigel you know i've been watching the it sector for the last two years hoping uh, to build a conviction to be able to buy but each quarter has come and gone um, and i haven't been able to build the conviction i mean if you read between the lines um, the the amount of effort uh, it takes to uh, grow revenues and to grow uh, grow margins uh, is just stupendous and it's not happening it's happening in a few pockets maybe one or two stocks uh and it's happening in the smaller companies but it's not happening with the leaders at all uh so i'll wait to see what this quarter delivers and if the commentary meaningfully changes like you pointed out the stocks are not cheap they're expensive um and growth is not for certain uh so if if growth is not visible and i am being asked to pay multiples which are higher than what they have prevailed on a 10 year a uh, basis or of 20 year basis then uh, you know i have uh, i i question if that's the fair thing to do so as of now i am out uh, will be watching the june quarter results uh, with a uh, great amount of interest as i have done over the last eight quarters and found uh, that uh, i should stay away let's see what happens i would i would uh, so the question is what do you like or do you like cash right now uh -huh. <laughs> no no uh, uh, prashant Uh, prashant yeah. prashant like i said okay look for front line there is opportunity okay. in banks there is opportunity in insurance companies both in general and a uh, life uh, there is opportunity in pharmaceuticals healthcare uh, there is opportunity in a whole bunch of mid and small caps but you got to dig deeper uh, all i'm saying is that what the 2000 and 2008 crash have taught me is that if there is a certain bubble forming in a certain area of the marketplace you can never say how large the bubble is going to get but you are better off uh, out early than waiting for the top that's all that i'm saying so i'm saying that look i'm not the one to be investing in power or energy or defense uh, or railways at this point in time but there are other opportunities so yeah i mean i what does have some cash allocation in the portfolio as uh, always uh but it's something out of ordinary right now because uh, you know the the whole environment is uh, quite positive for india so to expect that the market will correct and everything is very expensive that's not fair that's not right but there are pockets and i i, I think uh, i'm quite candid in sharing you know where i find those pockets mm. you use the b word ashwini the b word bubble right Uh, yes. I think most people are very hesitant in using that. It's been, you know, kind of circling in my own head as I look right. at the market because I don't think in our careers, uh, I'm sure Prashant would concur that in our careers that we've seen this kind of domestic money pumping in the market on a daily basis, right? 
So I don't know. When we talk about risks ahead for the market, and I don't want to be a bear over here, but uh, just asking the question, uh, is there a domestic liquidity bubble in the making and is that a risk? Yeah, that could be a risk. Uh, you know, Surbhi, if you go back and look at the history of markets in Japan and the markets in the United States, when in the United States, when 401k started to participate in the equity market, uh, you know, it led to decadal long, long bull run. Similarly, in Japan, um, and valuations became really, really expensive before they fell off. So, so I don't know how, how large this bubble will get. So you're right. I mean, there, there is domestic investor. There is demand from provident funds, from retirement funds, from pension funds, from uh, insurance companies, even if investors are... Uh, you know, not directly allocating, even where investors are not directly allocating, their savings are being put to work in the equity market via these indirect uh, um, uh, assets that uh, that they own or they have a right to receive uh, in the future. So, so, so you're right, there is a huge amount of money flow, but we are also starting to see a fair amount of paper flow. Um, I mean, earlier in the show, you were talking about ITD cementation. I mean, I don't have the stock. I don't own the name. But it's interesting that the promoters want to sell shares. I mean, over the last week, you see the number of uh, block deals that have happened where private equity players, um, uh, promoters, and various other people have sold down because, you know, markets are expensive. Even in their view, because they must be looking at their own business saying, like, look, it's not worth what the market is willing to pay for it from a long-term perspective. So we are better off taking some cash home, uh, de-risking or whatever you call it. So, so my point is exactly the same. My point is that, yes, there is a huge amount of liquidity flow and we cannot, for the life of us, uh, uh, you know, estimate how long this will continue and how high the market will go. But on a relative basis, the only way to, only sensible way in my view to play this is to buy areas which are not expensive, which will participate in the economic growth. But, you know, you're staying with market leaders, you're staying with out of favor, somewhat out of favor stock. So, you know, if the chips were to fall, you hurt less. That's all. All right, uh, Ashwini, thanks a lot for stopping by and filling us in with your take on the markets as well as stocks and sectors that you do like. Well, time to move on then. Let's